Our next speaker is Risa Ahmed. He's a program manager with the VWO and he calls himself an uh, occasional nuisance on Facebook. So please put your hands together for Risa. Rakan-rakan setanah air, friends, fellow Singaporeans. When the organizers asked me uh, if I would say a few words at this event today, I actually wondered, um, why would anyone want to listen to a nobody like me? Because you are probably wondering who is this guy. Um, saya bukan seorang blogger. Saya pernah memulakan blog, uh, Twitter juga pernah, tetapi tidak mengemaskinikannya secara... Uh, I did not manage to update my blogs regularly, so I gave, it, gave up on blogging. Now, I keep my opinions mainly to Facebook so that they can only annoy my friends. I also wondered what I would say that has not already been said by those more experienced, more knowledgeable, and more qualified than I am. Dan mereka yang lebih berpengalaman, lebih berpengetahuan, dan lebih berkelayakan amat menghuatiri peraturan petaruan, peraturan baru yang telah diperkenalkan oleh MDA. Naturally, the blogging community is very wary of the introduction of these new regulations by the MDA. They see it as another attempt by authorities to curb their internet freedom and it can only lead to further incursions into our right to free speech, our freedom of expression and our right to a free and fair press. Eventually, it is an impediment to the free flow of information and to independent thought and opinion. Mereka khawatir peraturan-peraturan ini akan membendung hak asasi mereka untuk bersuara, hak untuk kebebasan akhbar dan aliran bebas maklumat. Sebagai seorang individu, as an individual, tanpa sebarang hubungan dengan mana-mana lelaman web, blog, parti politik atau pihak, with no affiliation to any website, blogs or political party, Speaking in my personal opinion capacity and offering my personal opinion, I would like to urge my fellow Singaporeans, don't worry. Jangan bimbang. Adakah pihak pemerintah tidak menjanjikan kebebasan bersuara kepada kita? Have they not told us that we are still free to express our opinions even if we disagree with the government? And if you run your own site, giving your own commentary on local issues. Are you not able to continue doing so since your site is not a new site? So why you all go and catch out the government? Because the truth is, we are never truly free. Hakikatnya, kita tidak pernah betul-betul bebas. Say something wrong about the wrong people and what happens? Lawyer's letter, potential defamation suit something inaccurate and irresponsible or what they deem inaccurate and irresponsible and you might have to follow up with a clarification or a retraction and maybe a public apology Bila sesuatu pihak mencetak sesuatu yang tidak tepat secara tidak bertanggungjawab mereka perlu memberi penjelasan atau menarik balik apa yang dikatakan dan mungkin perlu memohon maaf secara terbuka Publish material which incites violence, mencetus keganasan. Threatens public order, mengancam ketentraman awam. Promotes feelings of ill will and hostility between different races and classes. Menggalakkan rasa jahat dan permusuhan antara kaum dan golongan yang berbeza. And you might find your the full weight of the Sedition Act being brought down upon you. Libel laws, newspaper and printing presses act, sedition act, maintenance of religious harmony, MDA's class licensing scheme and its internet code of practice. So why still need to add another new framework to license online with new sites? Dengan undang-undang yang sedia ada untuk memastikan semua pihak bertanggungjawab atas apa yang mereka cetak atau katakan, mengapa perlu diperkenalkan peraturan-peraturan baru? 
The minister has said that this new licensing framework is driven by technological changes leading to media convergence and the fact that more and more of you access news and current affairs through the internet. Yet this new licensing regime aims to distinguish between news sites and sites offering personal opinion and commentary. Our authorities, being always one step behind as they are, do not realize that the very media convergence that the minister speaks of can only mean that the boundary between news and opinion and commentary will not be as clear cut as this new framework would like it to be. Even as they dismiss your personal blogs as not consistently providing news, intelligence, report of occurrence or any matter of public interest. In which case, how far do you think they are willing to stretch the definition of a news site? How long before, as the previous speakers have mentioned, how long before anything that happens on this little island becomes news? If the issue is of credibility and responsibility, why should there be separate standards for news sites vis-a-vis -vis opinion sites and blogs? Either regulate us all or regulate none of us at all. Is $50,000 the new price tag for responsible reporting? Does being licensed suddenly make you more credible in the eyes of the public? Because when I think of our mainstream press, print and broadcast media, credibility is not something I usually associate with them. Basically, Basically, as Alan Soon of Yahoo puts it, further regulation is redundant. Peraturan lanjut tidak diperlukan. Even the minister would say that new regulation framework is not a fundamental shift in policy and that it is in line with the government's light touch approach to regulating the internet. I would like to tell the Minister that there is nothing light about any top-down regulation of the internet. There is nothing light about requiring $50,000 performance bond before a site is even granted the license to operate as a new site. There is nothing light about requiring these sites to remove content which MDA objects to within 24 hours upon its direction. Prescriptive behavior of any sort, when someone from upstairs tells you don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, is the very opposite of a light touch. <laughs> if anything, it shows just how much it shows the government's heavy handedness and just how much it mistrusts the citizenry to be discerning in the way that we access news and current affairs on the internet. Pihak pemerintah tidak punya keyakinan terhadap kearifan rakyat mengakses berita dan hal ehwal semasa di internet. There are those who say that the blogging community is simply paranoid. Bahawa kebimbangan-kebimbangan yang mereka rasakan tentang penasihatan internet dibesar-besarkan. Exaggerated. But no one talks about the government's own paranoia when its representatives likened the online media environment to the wild west and the cowboy town a few years ago. You've seen the speaker, some of the speakers today. The only one that even remotely resembles a cowboy is Andrew. <laughs> it is this same patronizing mistrust that will continue the government to prevent the government from accepting any sort of existing self-regulating framework for online speech which is why they have to come up with an internet, of, internet code of conduct rather than trust netizens to exercise their own discretion and behave like rational adults online. I say that what Singapore needs is not a more powerful or a stronger media watchdog. What Singapore needs is a media watchdog watchdog. And that is why we are here today. So when I say we shouldn't worry, seeing all of you here, seeing the, effort, the passion and the effort put in by the blogging community, we should not worry. We should move forward without fear and let them know and let ourselves be heard. Thank you.